see her off the back of one of the worst performances ever from a Chelsea side in the Premier League. There's been times this season where I didn't think it could get any worse. My gosh, this is going to be depressing. So look, buckle up, sit with me. And if you're a Chelsea fan and need a help, I'm here. We can talk. It's all right. What I need you to do, though, is smash the likes. Let's get at least 20 on this YouTube video. Um, I've been absolutely battered on Never a Foul. I've been put in jail. But some questions were asked that we have to speak about. Some things were put on show today that are genuinely concerning for me as a Chelsea fan. Because I kept thinking I could see a solution. Sack Pochettino, we'll turn it around, the players are okay. Or some of the players move them on, they're not that good. And then we'll get a better squad. We'll, we'll, we'll move on some more Deadwood and we can actually make uh, amends to our mistakes. I just don't think that's going to be the case. I think Chelsea Football Club are rotting in front of our very eyes. I think Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital and you name it, Egg Barley, whoever else is involved, are destroying this football club. I think they might have already killed it. I think it's that bad. I think the day they came in, they killed this football club. This loss is huge. Losing... 5-0 in the manner that we did to this Arsenal team. <clears throat> like, I, my voice is gone. I've been trying to defend Chelsea Football Club, but I can't do that anymore. You know, I, I, I can't do that because there's nothing left to defend. The players don't care about us as fans. Some of the egos on these players for what they've done, ridiculous. They've never achieved anything. Like the only thing they've achieved in their career is either a move to Chelsea or the fact that they're now professional footballers. And some players, look, they've got a few achievements, they've got a couple of accolades to their name, but my gosh, their standard is below where they must have been to achieve those or they were carried in those situations as well. We have spent hundreds and hundreds of millions on players... <clears throat> That simply aren't good enough for a mid-table Premier League team. We're carrying some players at the moment. We've proven that an, a, a kid who wasn't good enough to get into Manchester City's team for £40 million is absolutely the reason Chelsea are in mid-table in the Premier League this season. Because if it wasn't for Cole Palmer, my gosh. Really, let's be real about this. Where would we be? We would be fighting a relegation battle. It's crazy that this is how we're discussing Chelsea Football Club. And I think <clears throat> it's hard for me to decide on whether or not we were better with Graham Potter. And people are starting to discuss this now. I think what you have to remember is Graham Potter had a team that had won the Champions League not long before he got it. And it was just a club and a, and a, and a weird place for the club. We were in transition. But ultimately, Potter really didn't achieve with that team. But you might have argued that really defensively we were okay. The only thing we couldn't do was score goals and he just abused the management of Aubameyang and ultimately Aubameyang's gone to prove him wrong that he still can score goals um, he had strikers at his disposal and he just didn't use them the issue now is we don't have that team we've got players that have achieved nothing players that have cost an awful lot of money that we're never going to get back in transfer value ever because they'll never be worth the money that's been paid for them we've got a manager who has done okay to get this team where they've got to, <clears throat> but has made so many errors. It's un it's just it's just unbelievable now how they keep coming. There are massive, massive mismanagements of players <clears throat> and talent identification problems within the coaching staff, within the recruitment team. It's, it's it's ridiculous. We're signing players for a position and that isn't even their best position. You know, we're asking players to do roles that they've never done in their life. But we've signed them for that reason. Because none of it links up. None of it has aligned. And this is the issue. We've we've got these owners that have tried to bring in the best from everywhere and the best young talent. But there's never really been any clear direction of how it's meant to go because, my gosh, these owners, when they bought Chelsea Football Club, I don't think they came with bad intentions, but they came with a serious lack of knowledge of how to run a football club, what football looks like. It's such a massive, massive mess that I fear is completely 
undo it. Like you, you, it's irreparable, to be honest with you. I don't think Chelsea Football Club really ever recover from this. And I know that's drastic words, but that hole just keeps getting dug every single time. The longer that a, management, a manager stays in place of this calibre, or some of these players are allowed to keep representing Chelsea or being given contracts, the fact that we keep buying talent that somehow doesn't perform for us, but when they go elsewhere, they do. Like injuries through the absolute roof. The biggest disconnect between club and fans ever. This is, quite honestly, the biggest mismanagement and demise of a global brand and entity, whether it be in sports or the business, that we've 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 potentially ever seen. They have got this so wrong. So, so wrong. And you don't see many companies or clubs or sporting clubs drop off like this. And you know, you might see those Premier League teams that are okay and they fall into like League One and then they have to like try and get back. This is this is potentially worse for me because we're talking about a team that were one of the most successful sides in England over the last 20 years. In recent years, probably the third most successful side behind Liverpool, Manchester City. And when they were taken over, these owners were willing to put a billion pounds into this football club. Can you imagine if you took over the third best team with the recency of the last 20 years that Chelsea have, put in a billion pounds? You would genuinely be looking... And the argument would be there to suggest a complete and total dominance from Chelsea Football Club. If someone told you that was what was going to happen, they were going to get these new American owners that knew exactly how much money they wanted to spend. They had this clear idea that they could take Chelsea to the next level. There isn't one person in the world that would have given you this blueprint and said, this is how they're going to do it. There isn't one. And the way they have gone about it is crazy. It's so unacceptable. I mean, the UK government are partially to blame. They forcefully made a man sell his assets because of the country that he came from. Look, you can get into the beliefs or politics or whatever, but it is. He was never going to sell Chelsea. Let's be real. But we ultimately, some of us wanted these guys. They, they sold us a dream. And my gosh, it's a nightmare. We are living a nightmare. I don't see how we we recover. <clears throat> I don't know if anyone else does. I'm suffering. I know other Chelsea fans are too. I think our season's done, to be honest with you. There's that game against Tottenham on the horizon. But other than that, pff, we're going to be gifting out results left, right and centre. We almost, seriously, we almost want to lose to Villa. To uh, I, I never want Chelsea to lose a game of football. And even now, it means it doesn't. It just doesn't mean anything anymore because our season's done. But my gosh, imagine if Arsenal win the league and Spurs get Europe. We almost need Villa to beat us, don't we? It's that bad. And I, I used to think sometimes that a loss might mean that the manager would get sacked, but I think it just papers over cracks now. Because even if we go and get a better manager, I think there's issues with the team, and I think there's issues throughout the club that are seriously going to hinder us <clears throat> for a very, very long time. And I'm genuinely concerned. I'm genuinely worried about Chelsea Football Club. But what I will say is we've we've blatantly been left behind by some of our closest rivals in Arsenal, in Tottenham, in West Ham. They're moving away from us. The London clubs, they are. The Manchester clubs, wow, it's a whimper. I mean, United obviously is debatable, but Manchester City, that's what that final felt like. Don't forget about us. You know, we used to compete against you once. Just remember us because it's just uh, the fall off is crazy. You know, ever since Porto, City have just been pulling away from this Chelsea side. And then for a little bit this season, we've we've... We scored four in that first game and then we got a draw at the Etihad. had. Well, this one at the FA Cup the other day was a whimper and I've kept quiet about that because it was embarrassing. You know, the, the behaviour between Madueki and the way he was laughing, it, it doesn't look good. I can't tell you that he was or he wasn't for the reasons for the laughing or whatever. 
right? But when you see a legend of the club like Thiago Silva, and he is a legend, go off in the way that he is absolutely distraught. You know what it is? It's because he knows that his his career is obviously coming to an end and he's been adored by Chelsea fans, but he knows that he can't do anything about this mess that he's obviously going to leave the club in. And that's how you leave a football club. You don't leave it like Kai Havertz. You don't leave it like Mason Mount. You know, they had no class about them. Thiago Silva gets it. And he's almost sorry that it, it, it has to end like this. You know, it's so disappointing. But let's be real. Thiago Silva's better than Chelsea standard right now. And he could go and play for a better side than us. I just don't know where this ends. I really don't. And um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of Chelsea fans are asking the same thing too. And, and fans of other clubs, they're starting to talk as well. And they're saying, look, Chelsea aren't coming back. That's crazy because in 2021, three years ago, we won the Champions League. And my gosh, that game against Real Madrid, that might be our last Champions League game in a long, long time. And wow, did Frank Lampard let us whimper out of that one. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Chelsea Football Club we know and loved, they're no more. I will see you in the next one. <clears throat> it's going to be a hard finish to to get to the end of the season and the Euros as a Chelsea fan because it's going to be a weird place. It really is. I will see you in a bit.